For this reason, seeing the greatness of his plan by which ye are built together in Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name, may he grant you out of the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling in your innermost being and personality. Paul, by understanding so, that that's all you needed to live God's best. It doesn't matter what circumstances are surrounding them. That is why the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 14, that the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. But a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. Some of us, are living a very weak life because our spirits are unstable. They are not quiet. The Lord said to me, you will never hear me as you ought to hear me until you learn to silence your spirit. How do you tell an unstable or turbulent spirit? James chapter 1 verses 19. The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, one, let every man be swift to hear, two, slow to speak, three, slow to wrath. Let's begin with hearing. Mark chapter 4, verses 24, the Bible says, He said unto them, this is Jesus, take heed what you hear. Everything that comes back to you is as a result of what you're taking in with your ear. The joy you carry came after a certain voice you allowed in your spirit. There's a way you should hear. There are things you should hear. There are things I have learned and continue to learn not to hear. They come and I make sure they come through the left eye until they fall out on the right. And I say, Brando Goshi, Bradega Sokati. Because I don't want to affect the measure at which I receive. Every voice you hear has a meaning of life or death. Okay, nothing is said and it has no consequence, even if it's a joke. If somebody jokes something that doesn't agree with me, right there in my spirit, I say, no, canceled. When the Bible says that I would rather have you wise and to that which is good, that's simple concerning evil. Instead of God showing you 100 million ways of how things will end bad, he would rather show you two ways of how things would end good. Because by knowing that little good, you can avert every negative of your future. Stop sitting around bad news. That's what I'm trying to say. So he said, one, let every man be swift to hear. Two, slow to speak what you say. He's trying to tell you how to tame your tongue. Proverbs chapter 29, verses 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. That's how you know that somebody is an unstable person. Sometimes they will say things that by wisdom they're not supposed to say. There are many people here who can agree with me that you've been in a circumstance where a great door was open for you. For in some instance, even a window. And the next thing you know, you find somebody to vent out in the name of testimony. But without wisdom that some things have their own appointed time to speak. There are places by wisdom God has not ordained you to speak of wounds, even though impregnated, that have not brought forth, because there's a process between conceptions and bringing forth. That is why it's important to understand the wisdom to quiet your spirit, to know when you should speak and when you shouldn't speak. God rewards men who know how to quiet their spirit. When you understand how the laws of conception work, there are certain things that might not be spoken or shouldn't be spoken at a particular point in life. Why are they looking for Jesus early to kill him? There was a time it was wisdom for Mary and Joseph not to expose this boy. It was not yet time for him to be exposed to certain people. And some of you expose your oracle so early because you're indifferent to the timing of the Spirit, to everything there is a season. There's a time for everything. But if your Spirit cannot hear, how will you align yourself 
to the timing of every divine purpose. Because every purpose is timed by heaven. Matthew 12 says, Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment. Even that which was idle, you have accountability for. Put your hand on your chest and say, God help me. No prayer can go beyond your words. No plea can go beyond the words you speak every day. Tranquilize your spirit and refuse to confess certain things. But you cannot tame this thing if you have not tamed this. This is the wisdom to strengthen your inner man. Because somebody cannot see the correlation between what they were hearing and what they're speaking and the consequence of their marital destiny, their job, their ministry, their life, their body. Number three, he said, anger. How your spirit answers to offense. Ecclesiastes 7 verses 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Do you know what that means? Anybody who can keep anger has a foolish spirit. Do you know the Bible says, do not make friends with angry men? That's why I told you, some of you, the reason why you were not hired, you responded a certain one, somebody said, I can't work with you. There's a man who is supposed to be a millionaire in dollars right now, but they're looking for rent because in 15 minutes, they displayed an animal that the gate of opportunity could not work with. The man looked at her once and said, this is the woman I should marry. And then he took her for a date and she made a statement. Then she went on a prayer mountain. By fire, by force, James must come. Whoa, hey. pray the, until the cows come back home, fast until you lose your teeth. You learn to quiet the spirit. That's why I tell our young men, if a woman can't quiet her spirit, she can't hear you. No man with authority in his house wants to repeat himself. If a man repeats himself, it means her spirit is loud. It has many noises. Let's take it a notch high. Christ and the church. Jesus should not repeat himself with us unless we are conflicted in our spirit. But if he says, go, we should hear him once. And those are the three things. Take heed how you hear, what you hear. Be careful the things you speak. Tame yourself when you're provoked by your faith. When a man does those three things, one, you will start craving for solitude because it's the only way you will fine tune what you should hear. There are things you will never know until you learn to be still. There are things you're seeking answers for. But I, as God, cannot talk to you because you're not still. Have you really taken time to be alone with God for a few weeks, a few days? Just to ask God, what are you telling me? You will know what to do. It's in the stillness that that voice speaks. Certain things will start coming on your life that are going to mark you distinctly. Join our online family, spread the love, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Fenero, make manifest.